going on everybody? It's Aleem from Ambitious Labs and yes, I'm sitting under a tree. I'm in the heart of New York. It's the morning after Flutterflow Developer Conference 2023. Spent all night till like two in the morning hanging out with over 200 builders who are building in Flutterflow, agency owners, and even the core team at Flutterflow. We spent all night talking about why Flutterflow is the best, the new features they're launching, and why everybody's missing out by not learning Flutterflow and that Flutterflow is the only way to be building app businesses in 2023 and beyond. But honestly, I have a Flutter hangover this morning. I'm sick and tired of everybody saying that Flutterflow is the only way to build apps and you know, there's no other way to bring your idea to life. And so in this video, I'm going to be a hater and I'm going to tell you exactly why I think Flutterflow sucks and why you shouldn't use it to build your app and bring it to life. So let's get started. I'm going to go into three reasons starting now. Number one, web performance. So Flutter as a language was optimized to be a native first language. Flutter was built to talk to the low level bare metal APIs that run on a computer or on a mobile device. That means that there's very, very little space between the software and the underlying processors and the actual chips of the device. Whereas for HTML based apps like React apps or Vue apps or just regular HTML apps, there is something called the DOM, which is an abstraction layer between what the computer is processing on the bare metal layer and what the user actually sees. There's this entire abstraction layer called the DOM. That concept doesn't exist in Flutter. So it makes Flutter apps terrible for web. And mainly this shines right through when you're talking about SEO. Because since there's no DOM, Google doesn't know how to scrape the content of your Flutter app. So if you're trying to build an app that's content heavy, like a blog or an e-commerce store, absolutely Flutter sucks for that because you're going to have a very, very hard time indexing for SEO. Traditionally in HTML based websites, especially in single page apps, we already have this issue where static page application or single page applications like React already had problems problems with SEO. Then we released a hot fix for this idea of a robots.txt and creating server-side rendered React apps, but that concept doesn't exist in Flutter yet. So the web performance absolutely has issues. It also uses different rendering techniques like Canvas, which honestly isn't performant either. However, this isn't a Flutter flow issue. This is a core Flutter team issue. And last night, we did talk to a product manager who's working on the Flutter language itself, and she did mention that it is a priority for them. They are outpacing interest for React Native and React. They know web is a, a weak spot, and they are prioritizing fixing it. So I'm bullish. But honestly, if you're trying to build a web first application, you can look at tools like WeWeb. You can look at tools like Bubble, but I'm bullish that they will come back for web. However, if you're trying to build a web first app, Flutterpost sucks for that. All right, number two, solopreneur support. And this was one of the first things I identified when I first started working with Flutterflow in October, 2022. So Flutterflow internally is prioritizing support for enterprise level clients. They're going top down, which isn't a terrible thing because they're going for the masses. They think this is a winner takes all category and that they need to educate the masses before they go bottom up and work with solopreneurs. And that's one of the biggest market gaps that I saw when I first started using Flutterflow. And it's exactly why I founded Ambitious Labs because solopreneurs are the ones who are changing the world. Solopreneurs like you who have app ideas, who aren't afraid to trek uncharted territories and bring their ideas to life to solve problems for niche groups of people or even the whole world. Those are the people who are changing the world. And I feel like that was overlooked by Flutterflow. It was one of the biggest reasons I started Ambitious Labs was to focus on solopreneurs and Flutterflow themselves is doing a terrible job of that. So if you're a solopreneur you're trying to build with Flutterflow and you have no idea how to code, you're going to have to scavenge through discord groups, you know, talk to people, buy courses online. But you know, what the great part about all that is, is that Flutterflow is relying on the community like us, like all the other ambassadors and all the other creators in the Flutterflow ecosystem to create content, to uh, fill in the knowledge gaps and promote Flutterflow. So this isn't a bad thing. This is actually how strong products are built is when you have a community backing a product, you actually have a lot more feedback and you're taking in feedback from the important users who are the people from the bottom end of the spectrum, right? And so I think Flutterflow is doing a great job building with the community. However, if you're a solopreneur, the support does lack and you're going to have to spend a little bit of time digging. And this is exactly where our Dreams of the Apps Accelerator comes in. If you're a solopreneur and you're struggling to go from literally that idea in your head to launching something on Flutterflow, that's who our Dreams in the Apps Accelerator is for because building an app-based business or building a startup is a lot more than just building an app on Flutterflow. There's customer discovery, there's idea validation, there's project planning, there's design, UI UX, customer discovery, you know, onboarding. There's so many more components to building an app uh, that solopreneurs are struggling with. So if you're interested in learning the end-to-end -end process for taking an idea out of your head and launching an MVP, use the link in the description to request a free discovery call from a member of our team. We'd love to tell you more about how our Dreams into Apps Accelerator is filling this gap that Flutterflow is leaving wide open to help more solopreneurs. So yeah, number three, it is not a no code tool. Everyone keeps saying build an app without writing code, but it's actually not true. Flutterflow is not a no code tool. It's a low code tool. So if you're looking for something where you're going to be completely taken away from the code and you're never going to have to look at a single line of code, Flutterflow is not for you. Look, you can get very far without having to write any code, but you have to be open to the idea of seeing code, of debugging it, of challenging yourself just one step further to think like a scientist and a problem solver. And so if that's not you, if coding is something that you absolutely want 
want to stay away from, you don't want to go to Flutterflow. If you want to grow and you want to add hard skills to your toolkit, whether you want to become slightly technical, you want to learn what full stack development is so that you can speak the language of a full stack developer, that's who Flutterflow is for. Okay, so a lot of our students and entrepreneurs, they go into Flutterflow with the mentality of, okay, hey, it's no code first, but I am going to learn a little bit of code. So if you're someone who maybe even contemplated learning how to code maybe a few years ago, but never really got into it, Flutterflow is a great stepping stone into learning full stack development, learning Flutter. And since Flutter looks a lot like other languages like Java and JavaScript, you can actually take what you learn from Flutterflow and apply it to other languages. So it's definitely not no code, it's low code, and you have to be willing to step out of your boundaries and learn something new. So yeah, those are the three reasons I think Flutterflow sucks. Number one, web performance. Number two, solopreneur support. And number three, it's absolutely not no code. You need to be ready to challenge yourself. It is a low code tool. Awesome. So those are three reasons I think Flutterflow sucks. And if you agree with me, leave a comment below. I'd love to learn more reasons that you think Flutterflow sucks. Leave a comment below and join our free Discord community using the link in the description. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.